Praise God. So one of the most powerful things that we can do with the Lord is pray. And what we're doing today has impact because God is faithful. He's faithful to answer every single one of our prayers perfectly.
Praise God. Hallelujah. We're going to talk about being complete in Christ. Out of Colossians chapter 2, being complete in Christ, what that means. We're going to break that down today. And I think we're going to have a really good time in the Word. Amen? Amen. So, starting out with Colossians chapter 2 and verse 6 through 7. It starts out and it says, Therefore, as you have received Christ as uh, Jesus as Lord, walk in union with him. Walk in union with him. That's what it says in the Amplified Version of the Bible. So, reflecting. What does that mean? Reflecting his character and in the things that you do and say. In the things that you do and say. So you may be waiting on the Lord, but you need to reflect his character in the things that you do and say. Amen? Living lives that lead others away from sin. So you may want to ask yourself, say, self, am I leading people away from sin? Or am I engaging with people in sin? That would be the converse thing that you might be doing. But God wants you to live a wonderful life in him. Amen? And it says in verse 7, having been deeply rooted in him. Say rooted. Rooted. And now being continually built up. Say built up. Built up. In him. Notice it's always in him. And becoming increasingly more established. Say established. Established. Established in what? In your faith, the word of God says, just as you were taught. And in it, overflowing with gratitude. In that life, in Christ, overflowing with gratitude. Now notice, we just said four words that Paul uses. And it describes a believer's walk and what that means in Christ. The tense word, the, meaning the word before uh, where we're at, that we're rooted denotes a complete action, a complete action that is found in Christ. We have been rooted in Christ. The next three words are in the present tense, meaning, am I being built up? Am I being established? Am I overflowing? These things are in the present tense. And I'm, am I I in a continual path of growth in him? Do I see some growth in my life? Well, if I'm rooted, I need to be growing. <laughs> Amen? Yeah. We've got a plant in the foyer that's hopefully growing. We had to add some water to it. Amen? But it should be rooted by now. <laughs> but every Christian's walk should have those characteristics as a part of it. The verb rooted is a metaphor for receiving our substance from, our substance from Jesus continually as a plant takes its nourishment. So how do we take our nourishment from Jesus, right? We've got to be in his word, amen? Mm -hmm. And the Believer's Bible Commentary puts it this way. The word walk is one that's often used in the Christian life. It speaks of an action of progress. That there's steps taking place. You cannot walk, literally walk, in the natural and remain still. It's an impossibility. Amen? Amen. So it is with the Christian life. We're either going forward or literally we're going to go backward. And that's the way it is. We either go forward or go backward. What would you rather do? Well, you want to go forward, right? Yeah. Amen? Amen. So to be complete in Christ, we must receive nourishment from his word daily so that we can be built up and established in our faith. We were talking about faith earlier as we were discussing dinner, and, and uh, one young lady talked about the fact that she had received a healing, Pastor Kim, our worship leader, and she was, you know, astounded by that healing. And, and it's, it's, as she was observing that, she was actually literally being made complete in Christ in her healing. Amen? There was a completeness that was going on. There was a growth that was going on. But more importantly than the healing was a growth of faith. 
that was a part of it. It was an encouraging that God was bringing into her life. So in that case, we're moving forward, aren't we? Amen. That's good, because God is, is perfecting the things that concern us. So point number one, to be complete in Christ, we must receive nourishment from his word daily to be built up and established in faith. And I would submit to you, beloved, too, what you need to do is speak God's word out of your mouth because yeah. you need to hear it for yourself. You might read it, but you actually got to hear it. There's a big difference when you hear the word coming from your own lips. It causes faith to grow, doesn't it? So to walk with Christ in obedience and trust his word is to display his character to others along the way. So when we start to walk and we start to walk in Christ and we're established in our faith and, and you know, we're, we're growing and, and we're in his word and, you know, we had already taken root because we ain't going to go anywhere. If we belong to him, you know, we're not going to, we're not going to go anywhere else. If you're a Christian, if you receive Christ, if you didn't just mouth the words and you are, are trusting in him, guess what? You're rooted in him. Amen. You're rooted in the work of the cross. Amen? Amen. So we're reflecting his character. So what does it mean uh, to reflect his character? Well, we could look at some synonyms for character and, and, and reflecting character. So one might be that we're taking on his personality. Amen. Amen. I want to say, say to you, you know, you act like your father, you act like your mother in some ways. And you're like, wow, that's a personality I'm not sure I want. But you know, with our Heavenly Father, that's a personality that we want. With Jesus, that's a personality that we want. It's a nature that we want. Yes. It's not like human nature, slant ways nature, all kinds of nature, taking a nature walk, whatever your nature is, <laughs> but it is taking on and being in the essence of Christ. Your disposition, what does your disposition look like? Have we thought about that? What is your disposition today? Are you disjointed with anger? Are you disenfranchised with the world? What is your disposition? Are you walking in faith? What is your temperament today? Did you get up on the wrong side of bed? I've got a Boston Terrier that my wife Nancy says, Sometimes that dog puts on some grumpy pants. And we're like, yeah, sometimes inside out. She's really twisted. That temperament is not right. Amen. What's our mind like? What are we focused on? What's our thought life about? What are our attributes? Do they resemble Christ? Is there a distinctiveness about us that the world looks at and says, you know, they're different. Not just because they're strange, but they're, they're different. There's a difference between, you know, being in Christ and being strange. And, and there's a uniqueness about that person. It's something that I desire. It's something that the, the world wants and wants to, to be a part of. So Colossians 2, verse 8 and 9, verse 8 says, See to it that no one takes you captive through philosophy. We get philosophy in the university. You can get real dumbed down in the university today, can't you? And, you know, with empty deception. There's deception. There's smoke and mirrors in life. My gosh, you turn on the television, you watch a commercial, you think the, the medicine that they're serving up is the greatest thing known to mankind. Like you would want to have the disease just to have a happy life or something. So you could take the medicine. But... And it says in the Amplified, pseudo-intellectual babble. Am I just spouting philosophy? According to the tradition of men, musings of mere men, as the Amplified puts it, that's musings and meditating on stupidity today in the philosophy of men. Let's just recite Plato. We might as well do that. Amen. <laughs> For in him, and you know, we can follow the elementary principles of this world rather than following the truth. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes unto the Father except through me. So we find the truth 
in the teachings of Christ and being in Christ, not in the philosophies of the world, not in the university. There was a time that the universities were Christian. Not anymore. Not anymore. So we need to reflect on the principles of God and not the principles of this world. So point number three. Well, let's go back to verse nine, though. For in him, in Christ, is all the fullness of the Godhead that dwelled in bodily form, completely expressing the divine essence of God. The essence of God. I would like to take on literally a and even the sanctuary in this place take on the fragrance of God amen like we know that God was here do we know does the world know that God is in my life is there almost a divine essence that God is active in my life amen Jesus expressed the divine essence of God. So reflecting, going back to God's character, and point number three, reflecting Christ's character is separating ourselves to his way of living and not following the way the world thinks that we should live. And folks, it is easy to fall susceptible to those things. What does it say about the devil? He is the prince of the power of the air. How much time do we spend in the, on the television set opposed to, as opposed to being in God's word and focused on his character? Galatians 5, 22 through 23, but the fruit of the spirit is the result of his presence within us. The Amplified Bible puts it that way, is love unselfish concern for others joy inner peace am i calm no matter what's going on in my life patient i like what this says not the ability to just wait but what i'm displaying while i'm waiting amen yeah. kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control against which there is no law now, I want to go back to that because that's so important. What am I doing when I'm waiting? Am I, am I being becoming content? Am I being content with God's progress in my life? As I sit here, do I look back and I reflect and I say, wow, I'm, I'm different than I was yesterday. You know, I can find real joy in that. Amen? No one can take that away from me. No one can take away your freedom unless you let them. No one can take away having the mind of Christ unless you let them, unless you let something invade your life in such a way that it has taken over and now you are in that instead of in Christ. Amen? And it says, you know, with gentleness and self-control, against such things there is no law. Sometimes we want to complete ourselves with religion. We've got to measure up, and we think, well, we dotted all the, the, the I's, crossed the T's, did the right thing. We came to church, we wore the right clothes. We think we smelled nice, we put on deodorant this morning, but what matters to God? What matters to God is what is going on inside the heart. I remember God said to me one time, as I was starting to grow my hair out, and, you know, growing a beard, and came out of the insurance world, and, it looked like physically I had digressed. <laughs> but I started doing street ministry and all kinds of other things. And I, I remember God, you know, he has a sense of humor and he's, he's letting me know, you know, uh, hey, I never asked you to clean up the outside. This I can use. Woo. So God wants to use you in a special way. He's going to use you in a powerful way. In Colossians chapter 2, as we go on to verse 10 through 11, and in him you have been made complete, achieving spiritual stature in Christ. And he is the head over all rule, authority, angelic, and earthly power. 
Does, does it feel that way in your life? Do you realize that in your life? That he has all power, he has all authority, and his word is completely true. Yes. Do you believe every bit of his word? He's the head over all those things. And it says, in him, you are circumcised, not with a circumcision made with hands. Not that you could claim it. It doesn't count that you were born and you know, your mom took you down to the doctor, he spanked you on your butt as soon as you came out and you, you got you some something trimmed off you and you were circumcised, amen, on the eighth day. Paul said, I was a, a Jew of Jews, and I was circumcised on the eighth day. None of that mattered, he said. None of that human effort, none of that human cutting away, none of that what I have trimmed off myself, or what I think I've achieved in my own attitude, none of that seems to ever take root. None of it ever seems to make progress. If you are honest with yourself, anything I've tried to trim off myself in the flesh has never maintained and has never caused growth. That's really something to think about, isn't it? My human effort doesn't matter. In my best ways, I'm going to try to obey the law to my best of my ability, but at some point, out of human effort, I will rebel. And Paul really knew that. He said that, you know, the things that I want to do, I don't do, and the things that I shouldn't do, I end up doing anyway, just to paraphrase that. Right. So he says, it was a spiritual circumcision. It, it brought understanding to my heart. It was trimmed away by the Holy Spirit. It was cut away, not, not because I didn't understand why I was doing it or I was trying to clean myself off and I didn't know why. Not because suddenly I went to the manicurist and the nails look right. But inside, God is talking about inside. What is happening inside of us? Is it a stripping away of the flesh? Is it a stripping away of the sinful nature, which is miraculous, that only the Holy Spirit can trim away? Amen? Amen. Charles Spurgeon gives a definition of our completeness. He says, Complete, without the aid of Jewish ceremony. Or you could say, without the aid of being a Lutheran. Without the aid of being in Catholicism. Without the aid of being a Methodist. Without the aid of Jewish ceremony. Complete, without the help of world philosophy. Complete, without philosophy. Complete, without the inventions of superstition. Well, I think... See, you know, superstition is kind of subtle. We think, well, I'll sit on this, this side of the room. This is the sanctified side of the room. We used to joke about that at church. We used to say, the sanctified people sit on this side of the church. The other sanctified people, well, they sit back there. You know, there's a certain degree of an, uh, a uh, subtlety to superstition, isn't there, in our lives, if we're honest. We think, well, I don't wear my hat backwards. I got to wear it forward. People that wear their hat backwards, they're kind of backwards. So anyway, subtle forms of superstition. Without the inventions of superstition. Complete, Spurgeon says, without human merit, I don't get to measure up. Christ is complete all by himself. Amen. 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 So point number four. Being completed in Christ is to let go of everything that props us up in our insecurity. What it all boils down to is a sense of insecurity where God says, 
you are secure in me. In me is the only way that you're ever going to feel secure. Which means we must let go of everything that we use to prop ourselves up in the eyes of other people in the world, trying to measure up and thinking, well, trying to make friends, trying to let someone know that I did this. You know, I dotted every eye across every T. I just want to let you know that I did it. Amen. There's insecurities. There's ask God to show you what insecurities that you have in your life. And you'll be astounded by what he says and what he does. Because we must trust in him completely by faith. If you do that, he will answer, my friend. Colossians 2, 12 through 13. Having been buried with him in baptism. In other words, I take nothing. When you think of water baptism, when you think about when we do it in the church, we always say, tell me your testimony before you even get in the baptism tank. Tell me what God did for you. Tell the world, tell your homies what God did for you, okay? How he circumcised you, right? And then what you do, symbolic of the, the, the baptism, being raised to him in new life, is you go under the water. You go under the water, the washing of the water of the word. Amen. And then you get raised up to new life. The former things have passed away. They're on the other side of the word. They're on the other side of the Holy Spirit. They, I, now I am in Christ. Amen? Amen? And you're raised to new life through your faith in the working of God as displayed when he rose Jesus from the dead. Amen? Amen. That's a beautiful thing, isn't it? Baptism. Baptized, buried with him, raised, he that raised Christ from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, worldliness, manner of life, God made you together with Christ and freely forgiving us of all our sins. I thank God that that has happened in my life. I thank God that I am not the person I was before I came to Christ. Amen. I thank God, for one thing, I would be dead by now, to tell you the truth. If I was left in my sin, and you don't know, folks, you don't know those that we're talking to in the prisons, those that are incarcerated, you always have a sense of knowing that tomorrow is not given. Someone may even take your life, but you are complete in Christ. No one can really take eternity away from you. You need to trust him and be in him, my friend. Doesn't matter how many bars you got around you. Doesn't matter how many times you hear the gate slam shut. God has dealt with eternity on your behalf. Amen. And you can feel secure in Christ. So, being complete in Christ is being immersed in him. He is my life. I am completely immersed in him and have raised to supernatural new way of living. It isn't something I did. It is impossible that I would have ever accomplished it. It is a supernatural phenomenon that the world cannot grasp. So when you give your testimony, that's the most powerful thing you can do when we hit the streets, when, when you're in prison, when you're in prison, share what Christ has done for you. Amen. You will astound some people that may have wanted to kill you. There was a pastor that I know. He's with Praise Center Church, Pastor William Rodriguez. And a man came up and said, you know, Pastor, I don't like what you said. I'm going to kill you. He walked up with a gun says, I'm going to kill you. Pastor Rodriguez, in the moment of the Holy Spirit, said this, you can't kill me, son. 
I'm already dead. And the man dropped his, his hand to his side. The pistol fell out of his hand. And he couldn't believe what he was hearing. This man was not afraid of death. He was secure in Christ. The old man had passed away. That man was dead. There was a new man that was immersed in faith in Christ. Colossians 2, 14 through 15. Having canceled out the certificate of debt consisting of the legal demands which were in force against us, which were hostile to us, and his certificate he has set aside and completely removing it, nailing it to the cross. We could not measure up. Friends, you have failed in one area of the Ten Commandments or another. You have not honored your father. You have not honored your mother. There are times in your life when you did, did so, and there's times in your life when you've done neither. But you could not do it, and only Christ could do it. Only Christ could nail it to the cross. Only Christ could nail the demands of the law and all your measuring up and all you thought you were worth and nail it to the cross because you could never earn eternity. You could never do that, but yet he said, yes, today I have nailed it to the cross, and if you will accept it, you will be in Christ. You'll be rooted. But now, my friend, it is time to grow. It is time because when he had disarmed the rulers and the authorities, those supernatural forces of evil operating against us, the devil, the demonic forces are operating against people. When we're in the hood and people are under addiction, they tell me often that they have seen demonic forces chasing them, hounding them, running over fences, chasing them. Sometimes addiction opens your eyes to things you don't want to see. Hallucination, pharmacia, sorcery it's called in the scripture. Your eyes get open to the demonic realm and you realize that you cannot escape it. But look what Jesus did. The supernatural forces of evil operate against us. He made a public example of them. <laughs> they are nothing to him. Exhi exhibiting them as captives in his triumphal possession to the cross for the joy set before him which was you he went to the cross this triumphal procession was based upon souls the souls that would be won as he went to the cross and yet he would be raised from the dead Hallelujah. amen Amen. he made a joke of the devil yes. and the demonic forces Point number six is this. There's nothing to fear. See, we are complete in Christ because he has disarmed the principalities, the powers, all the deceptive devices, all the philosophy of them, and we just need to believe it. We just need to believe it. Say, I need to believe it. I need to believe it. I need to take his word and say every bit of it is true, and it's for me. Amen. You might read a passage in Isaiah that at the time was written to the people of Israel, but yet a scripture stands out for you. Yes. You need to grab a hold of it and run with it, my friend. If God has spoken it into your life, it is for you. Praise Amen. God. And you need to believe it 100%. Don't let people try to tell you, well, it says in the Expositor's Bible that it, it was specifically for them. And it's well, then it isn't for me. Okay, what do I do? I, I start to enter in into yeah. thinking and religion and, and philosophy and all kinds of muscular dystrophy and apathy and all kinds of, oh, I don't, I don't, I don't know right. what else you tell me. But, you know, here's the thing. We need to believe God's word. We need to take it as his word. And we need to walk in victory. Amen? Amen. 
Hebrews 13, 6. So we can take comfort and be encouraged and confidently say, the Lord is my helper in time of need. I will not be afraid. What will man do to me? Psalm 118, 6 says, the Lord is on my side. I, I won't fear what mere man can do to me. There's a scripture you can claim. Amen. Amen. Matthew 10, 28. Jesus saying this, the one that disarmed the principalities and powers, right? Before he had done that, not too long, he was going to go to the cross. In a while, anyway. He only had three years. Right. Don't be afraid of those who kill the body, but cannot kill the soul. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both the soul and the body in hell. There's coming a time. Christ is your redeemer. He's the one that has nailed it to the cross, all of your debt, everything, when you receive Christ. But he is also the one that one day will bring judgment to those that have tried to measure up according to their own merit, those that have tried to follow vain philosophy, those that have not lived for him, and there will, the time will be up for mercy, grace, and victory. What a sad day that would be. I want you to be with me in eternity. Amen? That's why he says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to be complete in Christ's security now and in our eternal future. You can have that now and in eternity. Amen? Amen. So let's review. To be complete in Christ, we must receive the nourishment of God's word. We have to build our faith. We have to receive it daily and be built up and established in our faith. Amen? Number two, to walk with Christ in obedience and to trust his word. And is to display his character. Do I live out his word? Do I live out his word towards others in my life? Am I displaying his character? Am I re reflecting? Point number three, reflecting Christ's character, separating ourselves to his way of living and not following what the world thinks in the way that we should live. I almost said I don't give a damn what the world thinks about how I should live. But somebody would say something to me about that later on. I'd probably give a nasty note, but I just said it anyway. <laughs> Being completed in Christ means to let go of everything that props up our personal insecurity. Amen? And we must trust him completely in faith, not rest in our insecurity. It's too often that we offer excuses about, about the way that I live and the way that I act and the way, well, my mom was that way and so I'm that way and my brother was this way and so we are this way. And You know, we, it's, it's propping up our insecurity, isn't it? So we need to be completely in faith in him. Being complete in Christ is being immersed in him, totally. He's my life. In him, raised supernaturally to a new way of living. Amen? I always say, you know, I was saved, but day to day I'm being saved from myself. Because he's revealing more and more to me that I need to let go of. And that's exciting. That's an exciting way of living. That's, that's a, a faith way of living, saying that, wow, God has shown me something today. I don't, I could have read something multiple times, but today God has shown it to me in a new way. And when we close ourselves off to what God wants to say, or we put God in a box, or we say, well, God always does it this way or that way or the other way, but then we all of a sudden decide on our own, we know all we need to know. And then all of a sudden we realize, or maybe we go to a church and we say, 
I'm tired of listening to that pastor because I'm not getting anything out of there. I'm not being fed. <laughs> the problem is the attitude with not being fed. Yeah. You will not be fed unless you want to receive from God. Right. You'll never be fed by looking at, okay, I don't like the t-shirt the pastor's wearing. <laughs> it says something about military motorcycles. And my God, he's got a knife on him. <laughs> What does it matter? Receive from God. Amen. Amen? Amen. We get hung up all of all kinds of crazy stuff. I'm, I'm right there with you, and I don't want to be there tomorrow. Amen? Yes. So there's nothing to fear. If we're complete in Christ, because he has disarmed everything, the principalities of power, let him disarm our attitudes. Let him, let him disarm our philosophy. Let him disarm the way we look at the world. Let them disarm the way we feel about people. Let them disarm all of our excuses. Let them disarm everything we prop up. Amen? So to be complete in Christ is security now. And it's security in the future. Let's pray together. Can we? Say, I want to be complete in Christ. in Christ. So I will receive, so I will receive the, nourishment of the, word the nourishment of the word daily, daily to, be built up, to be built up, established in faith. Established in faith. I will trust in your character. I will trust in your character. So I will let go, so I'll let go of the way the world thinks, the the world thinks about, life. about life. All the personal props, the personal props that, I built up that I built up to justify my way of living. I have no reservations. I have no excuses left. There's nothing to fear. I am made complete in Christ. Jesus, thank you for the victory at the cross. Thank you for the victory at the grave. I will walk into Christ's victory. Amen. Amen. to me. So this is what I pray.